Hello, in this video, I'll introduce our paper that will be presented in Winter Conference on Applications of Computer Vision 2023, second workshop on media audio quality in computer vision. The title of the paper is Accelerating AI Using Next Generation Hardware, Possibilities and Challenges with Analog in Memory Computing. I'm one of the co-authors, Prangular, we're from Ericsson Research. AI is rapidly becoming an essential part of our societal infrastructure with application spanning everything from self-driving cars to various IoT applications. With each year, the number of trainable parameters of advanced AI models is growing exponentially, now passing 1 trillion parameters for the most advanced NLP models. This has led to serious time and monetary investment for the training of these models, unavailable to regular developers. In addition, from an environmental point of view, AI is not sustainable. Training of a single regular AI model has been estimated to have similar CO2 emissions as a car in its entire lifetime. Due both to throughput and energy usage issues, AI is in need of new hardware. A single high-end GPU requires 100 watts or more, and these are often stacked into large computing clusters. In contrast, the brain consumes approximately 10 watts or more and can compute 10,000 times faster. Why? The brain does not separate compute and memory. For a data-heavy computation like AI, the bottleneck in terms of throughput as well as energy usage is often in the memory access. Thus, we could benefit by combining compute and storage in electronic hardware, a paradigm dubbed in memory computation or IMC for short. In IMC, we form dense arrays of analog memory cells where the conductance through each cell will represent the analog memory state. We use the fundamental laws of electronics to directly perform matrix vector multiply accumulate operations on the whole array in constant time. Importantly, we do not have to read out the memory to do this. The calculation is done within the memory circuit. The analog conductance state in each memory cell is efficiently realized by the use of scale devices called memristors. There are many different memristor technologies, some exemplified here. But the main idea is that their conductance state is non-volatile and programmable through applying a short current impulse above a threshold. In this work, we will focus on the evaluation of one such memristor technology, phase change memory, or in short, PCM. A PCM memristor consists of a phase change material in between two electrodes, a material that can be changed gradually between a crystalline and amorphous phase. These two phases have very different conductance, leading to the potential to also gradually var varying the conductance. However, as with all the real memristors, PCM exhibits some deviations from ideal behavior. This includes a drift of its conductance state over time, variability in the response from device to device, variations in the resulting conductance between each programming event. In this work, we will evaluate the impact of these common non-idealities on the performance of a PCM-based IMC system for two specific machine learning applications. In this figure, as an example, we show how a neural network is mapped to such a crossbar array containing memristors. The weights W and the input vector X are mapped directly to conductance values G and voltage amplitudes V, respectively. The output vector is encoded in the currents on each array column and is determined by Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's current summation laws. In this paper, we investigated two deep neural network applications, denoising and image segmentation. We selected these two applications with very different neural network architectures. The denoiser is deliberately shallow, allowing for in-depth analysis and is not meant to compete with state-of-the-art networks, in segmentation, we use much more complex architecture, mask RCNN. Due to its two-stage approach for class label prediction and mask prediction, it is interesting to see how non-idealities manifest themselves should they be present in different parts of the pipeline. Before showing the experiments, I'll explain the baseline parameters related to non-idealities present in PCM devices. First, Analog to digital and digital to analog converters convert digital weights to analog conductance values and vice versa. Hence, their bit precision affects the quantization accuracy. Programming noise happens when weights are programmed into conductance values. Read noise happens while reading the conductance values. Finally, 
due to change on the phase change material over time, programmed conductance values do not stay the same and drift of conductance values happens. The reference values that we selected for these parameters are displayed on the right. I'll start with the denoising experiments. As we see in the figure, analog reference performs close to or on par with the digital counterpart. Hence, this gives a certain level of credibility despite the presence of device-specific non-idealities. On the other hand, the denoising application suffers severely from lowering ADC bit resolution. Especially when ADC resolution is 4 bits, the reconstructed images all look the same. This is the zero mapping and is a result of the weight distribution of the analog layers. Since the hidden layers contain mostly near zero weights, the resulting tensor is quantized to an all zero tensor at the ADC. We mitigate this problem with non uniform quantization. We also vary input noise. We note that the autoencoder is trained on images with noise level up to 0.6. In digital domain, it can extrapolate the results until 0.64 noise level. However, in analog domain, we already see noticeable degradation in earlier noise levels. Secondly, I'll explain our experiment with segmentation application where we used mass RCNN. Again, for segmentation as well, the analog baseline performs in acceptable range. For ADC bit resolution, we see degradation starting at 6 bit precision. For programming noise effect, we see that segmentation is affected much more than denoising application. In denoising application, we see some degradation in a few digits with higher noise level. However, in segmentation, we see degradation already in lower level of noise. Contrary to programming noise, read noise does not have a significant effect on segmentation while we see some degradation for denoising application. For conductance drift, we observe its degrading effect much earlier in segmentation than in denoising application. Finally, we show some analysis on mask arsenan to stretch approach for class label prediction and mask prediction. According to our experiments, Conductance drift affects more obviously class labor prediction stage, while programming noise affects more heavily mask prediction stage in mask RCN. As a conclusion, analog in memory computation systems can have advantages such as increasing speed and energy efficiency for constraint devices, especially for matrix multiplication and accumulation applications such as neural networks. However, they are noisy devices, hence investigating their noise sources is important. We do that investigation for two computer vision applications. We are hoping that this investigation will give possible insights on how to design future hardware as well as how to select suitable applications for which analog in-memory computation systems are likely to perform well. However, we are aware that our investigation is limited, hence as a future work, we plan to conduct further detailed analysis and comparison between analog in-memory computation and digital in-memory computation devices under different requirements such as accuracy, speed and memory consumption. Also, we plan to conduct similar experiments with different applications to collect more insights. This is the end of our presentation. Thank you for listening.